Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the second book of Samuel. When the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, see, now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant, David. Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, 
and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest from your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. 
for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Here ends the reading. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What do we think about when we hear the word Advent? What is Advent about? It's about Christmas. It's about the pageant, the Advent wreath, the candles, carols. It's about waiting. What are we waiting for during Advent? Well, I don't know about you, but I, for one, tonight, I'm waiting for Santa Claus. We're also waiting for presents. We're waiting for Christmas. We're waiting for our family. We're waiting for Jesus. An American philosopher once said, it is very, very, very hard to wait. Especially when you're waiting for something very nice. I think it's very, very, very hard to wait. He's not wrong. It's hard to wait when we're so excited for Christmas to get here. It's hard to wait to open our presents. It's hard to wait for the birth of our Savior, Jesus. So what do we need to wait? Well, we need patience. We need faith. Our gospel tonight gives us the ultimate example of advental. Yeah, I just made up that word. Advental faith. Let's take another look at this story. We know that Mary was young. Most believe that she was a teenager. So an angel comes to her. An angel appears to Mary and says, you know that God loves everyone, but you, young lady, you're one of his favorites. You're going to have a baby. You're going to name him Jesus. The baby will be known as the son of the most high. He will inherit the throne of David and reign over the people of Israel forever. But, but I'm, I'm a virgin. Well, yes, the Holy Spirit is going to give you ch a child. And that child will be the son of God. Oh, and by the way, you know your cousin, the one who's old and barren. Well, she's pregnant too. She's going to have a baby. God made all of this happen. Now, what does Mary say? Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I mean, no wonder Mary was one of God's favorites. That kind of faith is unreal. Now, sitting there tonight, I want you to close your eyes. Imagine, it's November 2019, and an angel comes to you and says, child, get ready. 2020 is going to be a year. The Pentagon's going to release three videos of UFOs. There are these things called murder hornets. The 2020 Summer Olympics are going to be held in 2021, but we're still going to call them the 2020 Olympics. The newly married Prince Harry in the UK, well, he and his wife are going to leave the royal family. And the UK, the UK is going to leave the European Union. And politics are even going to get wilder. There's going to be a devastating explosion in Beirut that will kill over 190 people. 47 million acres of Australia are going to catch on fire and burn. Millions of acres of California will burn. We're going to lose Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Alex Trebek, Sean Connery, Little Richard, Kenny Rogers, John Lewis, Regis Billman. Yeah, I know, they're getting up there. But Eddie Van Halen, Kobe Bryant, Chadwick Boseman. And then there's COVID-19, a global pandemic that everyone thinks is going to last a couple of weeks. And it will continue into the new year. The Dow will see the worst crash in nearly 40 years. 
Broadway will be shut down for over a year. Industries will close. Entire countries will shut down. Over 300,000 people will die. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't even fathom what my reaction to that news would be. I do know that I'm sure it would not be Mary's attitude of, okay, Lord, I'm, I'm here, let's do this. Yes, the Annunciation and a warning about 2020 are very different. However, I'm sure that they are both equally as unfathomable to their respective audiences or pretend audiences. So now again, I ask you, what are we waiting for this Advent? What are we waiting for tonight? A vaccine, return to the school, a return to the office, a return to employment, going back to our favorite restaurants, going to the theater to see a movie, going to the theater to see a play or a concert, going to our friend's house, going back inside the church building, the Eucharist. As we wait for all of these things and so much more, we need to strive for the faith of Mary. Now, I know that is a pretty tall order. We are talking about Mary here. But Mary was human. Did she question God? Yes. Do I believe that she got mad at God? Was she scared? Was she confused? Yes, yes, and yes. And so do we. So are we. Did she know exactly what was going on? No. And neither do we. Nonetheless, she had such an immense faith in God. All of these emotions, fear, anger, confusion, sorrow, grief, all of these make the waiting that much harder, even with an amazing faith in God. Waiting is hard. It's not fun. So what do we do? To quote the philosopher from earlier, let's think of something to do while we're waiting, while we're waiting for something new to do. Let's try to think up a song while we're waiting. That's liberating and will be true to you. Let's think of something to do while we're waiting, while we're waiting till something's through. You know it's really all right. In fact, it's downright quite bright to think of something to do that's specific for you. Let's think of something to do while we're waiting. Now, if we think back to the beginning of the pandemic, we all remember those friends on social media, maybe you were one of them, who said, I'm gonna learn German. I'm gonna repaint the house. I'm finally gonna get my house clean. I'm gonna get organized. I'm gonna read all of the Lord of the Rings books. I'm gonna watch all of the Marvel movies. Well, that's great. And I would love to know if anyone who set those goals actually achieved them. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's not what Fred Rogers was talking about either. I'm saying to start small. What is something small you can do to help with the waiting this Advent and beyond? Or what is something that you're already doing that you may not have recognized was helping you get through this time of waiting? It doesn't have to be big. Lord knows I barely got a quarter of the way through the book I was writing. But how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So let's find some small bites and celebrate them. Read more. It doesn't have to be a whole book every week. It could just be a newspaper article. Just read a little more. Pray more. You are all more than welcome to join me and my St. Phoebe school friends every day for morning prayer. Or just take a minute or two before bed and say one extra prayer. Or read a short devotion. Enjoy your family more. Now I know. We're all stuck at home with each other 24 seven. And for some, this might be you know, harder than learning German, but find a new way to connect with your family. Maybe it's calling that cousin that you hardly ever talk to, 
Or maybe it's as simple as playing Minecraft with your kids for a little bit. Bake more, play more, go outside more. Or maybe you just need to stop and celebrate that you made it through another day during a time when the whole world seems upside down. Today is the fourth week of Advent and our wait for Jesus is almost over. But there is so much more we are waiting for. Do the things you can to cope with the waiting that we are doing as a people. Try to find ways to make the best of the situation we're dealt. Celebrate the small victories as they come and feel the other emotions as they happen. But most of all, have the faith that Mary had. Know that God is good. He loves us and will see us through this. All of this and beyond. for the entire world be our life today. to share with others. Unite us in your love. our shepherd you come to seek those who are lost you visit the lonely and the abandoned give them new hope Spirit, you place in us hope and joy. Fill us with your love.
Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. Comforting Spirit, you awaken in us a love that forgives. Come to us, Holy Spirit. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen to me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. When I call, answer me. O Lord, hear my prayer. O Lord, hear my prayer. Come and listen. Rest in peace. In God alone. 
Oh, mm-hmm.